How astonishing it is that language can almost mean, and frightening that it does not quite. Love, we say. God, we say. Rome and Machiko, we write, and the words get it wrong. We say bread, and it means according to which nation. French has no word for home, and we have no word for strict pleasure. A people in northern India is dying out because their ancient tongue has no words for endearment. I dream of lost vocabularies that might express some of what we no longer can. Maybe the Etruscan texts could finally explain why the couples on their tombs are fine, are smiling, and maybe not. When the thousands of mysterious Sumerian tablets were translated, they seemed to be business records, but what if they are poems or songs? My joy is the same as twelve Ethiopian goats standing silent in the morning light. O oh Lord, thou art slabs of salt and ingots of copper, as grand as ripe barley lied under the wind's labor. Her breasts are six white oxen loaded with bolts of long-fibered Egyptian cotton. My love is a hundred pitchers of honey. Shiploads of Thuya are what my body wants to say to your body. Giraffes are this desire in the dark. Perhaps the spiral Minoan script is not language, but a map. What we feel most has no name, but amber, archers, cinnamon, horses, and birds. I recited The Forgotten Dialect of the Heart by Jack Gilbert. Mm -hmm. He's a Pittsburgh poet, um, and that poem is from his collection, The Great Fires. Yeah, like four, like four or five years ago in college, one of my friends who lived in Pittsburgh uh, showed me the poem, and um, I think, I don't know, I feel like as I've, as I've memorized it and then as I've just spent time reading it, I think I've, I've gotten a better hold of it. You're fine. I was living near Pittsburgh whenever someone introduced me to the poems of Jack Gilbert, and I think um, that landscape is so present in all of his poems. But I think this one is particularly special to me because of the way it talks about language um, and how language doesn't really get at what we mean sometimes, how um, image is more suited to getting at meaning. Um, or not even image, just different, um, like the actual thing beyond the image um, gets at what we feel better than words. Um, and I really like the way that he explores that in the poem. I don't know. I know um, he was like a contemporary of the Beats. Um, and like when he started out, he he like was like, I'll go to a few parties. And then he was like, no, I want to hide. <laughs> so that's... Uh, yeah, he spent a lot of his time after that um, traveling and, um, yeah, hiding away to write. Um, yeah, for Be sure. Honest. I think um, something Jack Gilbert does that I admire is the way he, he's very, um, his language is often straightforward, and I admire that. I think I do something similar in my writing. And then also I'm interested in the idea of, like, what language can do and what it can't. What are the boundaries of language? Um, where does language fail? And then where do other things come in? Um, and then how do we get closer to other people? The question that most poetry is asking. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. No, I think that's right. I think, um, I don't know. I think like we talk a lot about you know, uh, signifier and signified. If I say tree, you think of one tree and I think of another tree, right? Um, and I think he's getting at this idea of like, you say a word and you say it to someone else and they might not know exactly what you mean. Um, and I think one of the important things for this poem is that he uh, uses the name Machiko, um, who is his wife who is um, like passing away at this time. Um, so, he, like, a lot of these poems in this book are written toward Michiko, um, but, like, I think even, like, he, he's invoking her name in this poem, and still, like, he almost is like, I can't get at what you mean, even just by using your name. And I think, like, that's, that's the way language is. It's so slippery, but also we have to use it to get to one another. There's no way 
um, there there are other ways to get toward each other, but languages may be one of uh, one of the ones that we have the most access to. Um, one of the one of the things I'm ex in exploring in my poetry is uh, my mother-in-law speaks Spanish and I speak mostly English, and there are some places where we can cross that language boundary, um, but. Uh, because there are only so many words that we can use, there are only so, like, it It doesn't allow us to really get close to one another. The way we get close to one another is by spending time together and being in the same space. Um, so it's not necessarily where language fails, it's where my language fails. Um, but I think, um, yeah, I think being together does a lot. Um, and I think maybe it does some things that language can't do. So exactly. Oh, the amber, archer, mm -hmm. cinnamon, horses, and birds. Yeah. Yeah, I think, like, just um, naming, I think all of those things are, like, they come in uh, large quantities or multitudes. Is that right? Amber, archers, cinnamon, horses, and birds. I don't know. I think... I was reading an essay by Rachel Menes, um, and it was talking about um, sitting with her students and talking about a, a Chen Chen poem about um, that mentions both um, mangoes and tomatoes. And the students were like, "But what does the mango mean?" And it's more like, "What is what is this uh, like? What does this hold emotionally? What do you come away from this poem knowing that you didn't know before?" And I think that's what those images are also doing. I was reading an interview with Ocean Huang, um, and he was saying, you know, the way you, like, awards are, awards and, like, publications are useful, but, like, he advised uh, his audience, like, don't make them your whole life, like, use them to find your people, and then, um, like, like uh, I think he used, like, um, like, the example of, like, a subway, like, get off at your stop, find your people, and then... Um, like keep working on your craft. I think that's good advice. Like I, I think like, like uh, do do the good work of writing the hard poem. <laughs> um, yeah.